What is up guys, Technicals here coming at you with something a little bit different today. We're back with episode two in our Wishful Thinking series. I recently passed 100,000 views on this video here, the video that has the least amount to do with cryptocurrency, but we're going to... First rule of journalism, you give the people what they want. And in the spirit of that, we're coming back with episode two. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this thing right here, a wind turbine. How many miners can we power off this single wind turbine? Say you're somebody that wants to go off grid because you think 5G wireless is a scam that's turning frogs gay and you want to be away from civilization but you still really need to mine cryptocurrency and you got to find out a way to power it. Today we're going to be taking a look at the windmill to see how much we can generate consistently. We're going to be making a lot of assumptions and we're going to, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to make a lot of assumptions. I'm the Technicals. Let's get into it. The Technicals. So if you'd like to see more videos like this where we explore alternative renewable energy options for cryptocurrency mining or anything else, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. So the turbine we're going to be taking a look at today is this one I found here on eBay. It looks like it comes direct out of China, not a name brand, rated at 10 kilowatts, complete set wind turbine with 12 meter freestand tower and 10 kilowatt inverter retails for $20,918 with free shipping from uh, Guangzhou or Fuzhou, sorry, here to the United States. So not a bad deal. However, installation and the supplemental uh, accoutrements that come along with installing this type of item, I'm going to go ahead and assume are going to round us up all the way to $30,000. That's on the high end, and I told you we're making assumptions here. However, all the necessary equipment to wire this thing up, install it, unless you're going to install it yourself, if you know how to do that, I'm going to put it at $30,000. But the details are kind of light here. It doesn't really show much. Let's go ahead and click over into read full description to see what this turbine's all about. You can get some basic stats here, but what we're really after is the rated speed. And on some uh, very basic research, it looks like wind turbines are rated for specific speeds to reach these rated amounts. They say you're going to get 10 kilowatts at it, out of it, but you're going to have to achieve a certain wind speed in order to get it. As we all know, wind is not consistent, not like hydroelectric or even solar to some degree. Wind comes and goes, it speeds up, it slows down, even if you're in a very windy part of the world. It's not always guaranteed. God. So this 10 kilowatt wind turbine is going to need a rated wind speed of 11 meters per second. That comes out to about 25 miles per hour. That's pretty windy. That's a nice, heavy, consistent wind. It's got a blade diameter of 8 meters. So that's a total of, uh, that's a lot. 8 meters times 3, roughly a yard. That's uh, around a 24 foot wingspan on that bad boy. It's fiberglass and it says it needs a starting wind speed. So I'm guessing it needs some kind of ramp up time. Security wind speed 55 meters per second uh, with a 15 kilowatt maximum uh, output power so it is limited based on uh, some information down here in the description saying that it is uh, it keeps it from spinning too fast I'm sure you've seen videos like these where if the wind turbines um, uh, security measures fail and the turbines allowed to spin too quickly it does cause it to explode in a uh, blaze of glory sure fun to watch those things so for our first big assumption we're gonna assume that you live in a place with 25 mile per hour winds that go on consistently 24 7 365 they never ever stop and that's gonna allow us to achieve that rated 10 kilowatt uh, uh, power output of this turbine Unfortunately, though, we are going to figure in a 15% loss of efficiency from that maximum rated output just through manufacturing defects or attenuation or whatnot. You're not going to achieve that maximum 10 kilowatt output unless all the conditions are perfect and this turbine coming out of China, I'm just not thinking it's going to hit that mark even with the maximum rated wind speed. So we're going to take 15% off the top and put it down at 8.5 kilowatts. But that's not so bad. 8,500 watts consistently all the time, 24-7, that's going to give us enough to power 43 1080 Ti's. That's the card we're using for this example. How'd I get that? I figured in 200 watts per 1080 Ti. Now you might be saying, I run my 1080 Ti's at 150 watts, 170 watts, whatnot, and so on and so forth. However, I'm figuring in a little bit extra because you have to power your motherboards, your lights, your other things, your accoutrements that go along with that mining rig. So I'm figuring in 200 watts per card. If we head over to what to mine and we put in one single 1080 Ti, currently the most profitable thing right now is Ravencoin, also X16R on NiceHash just below that, probably to do with Ravencoin's price going up a little bit here recently. Below that we see down here Sukacoin and Grin, a staple for the past several weeks, also Hash on NiceHash and going down our tried and true Ethereum, currently coming in Ethereum at 62 cents 
per day per 1080 Ti. Uh, of that 16% or 16 cents is profit. So you're not pulling much at all right now. But if we go to the top and we're currently pulling in 88 cents of uh, raw revenue per Ravencoin, that's not too bad. 43%, 43 cents uh, of that is profit. Now, our wind turbine is putting out pure free power. We're not having to pay for that power. So we're going to take this top line and we're also going to round it up to a dollar just to keep things nice and simple. And that's when our second big assumption comes into play. You're going to have to map out what you think cryptocurrency is going to do. Is Ravencoin going to double in price uh, this time next month? It, will it quad quintuple in price? Will Bitcoin go up 10 times in the next year? We don't know. And that's the game that, as speculative miners that we play on a day-to-day -day basis. When we mine and hold something, we're hoping that it goes up in value. That meaning that these calculators have been wrong the entire time. Something I preach about quite a bit is that these calculators mean nothing unless you're selling out at the time of mining each and every day. So if we're pulling in $43 per day, our windmill, which costs us $30,000, and we're going to ROI, we're going to break even on that, we're going to pay that off off in 697 days. Now, as we all know, mining profits are very, very low right now. $1 per day per 1080 Ti, that's really, really low. So if you take that 700 days, roughly, that's a little, about two years, you can go ahead and cut that into half, into thirds, into quarters, if you think the price of cryptocurrency is going to go up uh, more or less. Also take into consideration the network difficulty. If you're mining something like Ethereum right now, and they switch to uh, ProgPal, then you're going to get a larger share of the block reward, even though the block reward is diminished. So you're going to have to figure all these things in if you're currently building out a renewable energy mining operation. But technicals, you're forgetting about paying for the cards. Well, I haven't forgotten. If you see over here, we're going to go ahead and plot that out right now. Total 43 1080Ti's we're putting in at $450. That brings us to $19,350. That's going to go into about seven rigs worth of cards, six rigs uh, or six cards per rig. We're going to figure in a total of $1,000 using the cheapo Weepo parts. We're going to just going to keep it at a flat $20,000. Now, if you figure in that $20,000 plus your $30,000, then as you can see, it's going to take you a very long time to break even on all this hardware. However, if the price of cryptocurrency doubles, triples, goes up by a factor of 10, 20, 100,000 million, then you're going to pay this off very, very quickly. If you're mining with low difficulty, if you're mining uh, and getting a larger share of that block reward, then you're going to be well suited to break even on this kind of stuff a lot faster. And that's where my final point kind of comes in. It makes much more sense to capitalize on what someone else has built. You see this all the time in business. When someone else builds a building and they go bankrupt because they can't pay off the, uh, the construction costs of that building, they leave. Then a new business slides right in and doesn't have to incur any of the costs of building that building. They just start operating. Same thing goes for hydroelectric dams that were built in the former Soviet Union or any other type of infrastructure that exists currently and where the original owners no longer want it, no longer can afford it or need it, then you are presented with an opportunity to slide in and take that over. So it may be advantageous if you live somewhere with cheap power that's near a hydroelectric dam or you find a property where someone built a solar array or a wind farm or something like that. Consider capitalizing on what they spent uh, to make money for yourself. Overall, though, this thing is an absolutely terrible buy. Just looking at the rated power versus what it needs to generate that power, you're, meant, you're not meant to run electrical devices straight off of this thing. That's not the point of solar or of wind power. Wind power is meant to be stored in battery banks or by some other means to be used for later. That, may, that meaning you can capture the energy when it's available through the wind, send it to a battery, and then when you need it, you invert it and use it in your everyday operations. Things like hydroelectric are a little better because those are constantly producing power and about an even amount of power. Now, sure, it probably has to run through an inverter and even a battery bank in order to stabilize the output of it. However, the point being is that hydroelectric is coming out 24-7 that you cannot stay the same for anything like solar or wind. Things like geothermal are a little better because that constant source of heat from geothermal is going to be able to deliver a more consistent outflow of power. However, things like wind farms, not so much. So is it worth it? No, it's not. Not unless you live in a place with a lot of consistent wind and you're ready to shell out big bucks 
for inverters and grid links and batteries and banks and all kinds of things. It might make sense if you live by the ocean or the desert, somewhere where winds are consistent, where you can get a lot of wind all the time, because if that thing ain't turning, then you ain't burning. I don't know what that means, but that probably means that you're not mining, you're not making any money. I think the gold standard scenario for people our size, consumers, prosumers, people who want to homestead, live off the grid, is going to be micro hydro. If you can find a plot of land with a lot of head, a lot of drop on that water, and you can set up a micro hydro station, then you can generate a lot of power consistently. If you look at the old video about the turbulent system, it was rated at 15 kilowatts, which is a lot. That's more than a home would use on a day-to-day -day basis. You could even start selling it to your neighbor or powering mining equipment. For most people, they don't have that type of setup, and they don't have that much land, and they don't have a lot of water flowing from a large uh, high up space in the mountains or anything like that. So I think for most people, the best option is going to be something like solar. If you'd like to see a video on how much it would really take to power just a few mining rigs, how many acres of land it would take, and how many solar arrays, a more detailed breakdown, let me know in the comments below and be sure to like the video, subscribe, see the description for links to everything that we talked about here today and to my social media channels. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm at the technicals. You can also come into our Discord. Just click the link in the description below or go to discord.thetechnicals.io into your browser. On the technicals, see you next time.